Well, good morning and welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Irv Rish, and uh, today we're going to continue on. We left off with, uh, uh, we finished chapter 6, which was talking about the temple of God. And we are moving on into chapter 7 uh, of our study in the book of 2 Corinthians. And uh, it, it's kind of got a little quick introduction to this chapter. And then it goes into the subject of uh, uh, Paul's joy. And uh, so with that said, I am just going to start our, our lesson here and by reading the scripture. It says, since we have these promises talking about all that we were talking about last uh, time we got together, since we have all these promises, beloved, let us uh, cleanse ourselves from every defilement of the body and uh, the spirit and uh, bringing holiness uh, to the completion in the fear of God. I don't know if you remember what I talked about, but I talked about, uh, you know, things that are before us in this world. I mean, like we turn the television on. We go out into the world. No matter where we go, we pick up a magazine. We we see on television, uh, even the commercials and so forth. Uh, there's there there's no cleanliness in the world anymore. Everything seems to be filth, and that's exactly what it is: filth. Uh, sin is glorified. Uh, we're encouraged to overindulge in uh, alcohol. Uh, you know, at least they got rid of all the cigarette commercials and stuff they used to have when I was growing up. Uh, and they got rid of a few things, but the things that they added uh, is twice as bad. We live in a filthy world. And uh, seeing last week that we talked about being the temple of God, we have to uh, kind of flee from all this. So really... I feel this little portion in the very first verse really belongs in the last chapter. I probably should have even included it in the last chapter, but I didn't. But uh, we go on, and Paul talks about his joy now. Uh, in it, and he says, Make room in your hearts for us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have taken advantage of no one. I do not say this uh, to condemn you, for I said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. I am acting with great boldness towards you. I have great pride in you. Now, we're not to have pride in ourselves, but we can pride in others. He says, I have great pride in you. I am filled with comfort in all our afflictions, and I am overflowing with joy. Well, I know that this is not really what it's talking about here, but I'd like to just mention that, you know, they call this Pride Month. Why don't they just call it Sin Month? Because uh, that's exactly what it is. Pride is a sin. Pride was the first sin even before the world was created. There was an angel in heaven by the name of Lucifer. He was the morning star. He was the bright and most beautiful angel, the most beautiful creation of all God that God had done. And he said, move over, God, I want to take over. And basically, it was a sin of pride. He thought himself above God. And any time you think yourself greater than God, and, uh, but pride in others is a little different. Uh, maybe even the word should not even be pride. Uh, just, uh, I'm really uh, overwhelmed by you or, or something like that. But uh, pride in itself is not wrong, but pride in ourselves is wrong. So got to remember that. For even when we came into Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted and at every turn. 
fighting without and fears within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted by you, as he told us in your longing, uh, you mourn your zeal for me, uh, so that I rejoice still more. So the Corinthians were really uh, loving of Paul, and they were waiting for Paul to come. For even if I made you uh, grieve with my letter, and that was the first letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I see that the letter grieved you, uh, though only for a while. It was only a temporary thing. And uh, he goes on and says, As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved unto repentance. You see, this is why this letter is different than the first one, because there was true repentance on the part of the Corinthians. They changed what they were doing. They gave up their sin. They, they realized their sin, and they repented of it. And, and when people repent of, of their wrongdoing, their sins, we are to forgive them and accept them back into the fellowship uh, with God's saints. For you felt as godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. So that's why, it, it, you know, it's this, this letter is so important because it kind of puts the frosting on the cake, so to speak, uh, from the first letter. The first letter was a letter of correction. But the beautiful part is the Corinthians uh, repented of it. And uh, Paul was so grateful for that. But it grieved them that he had to even write that first letter. And he had to uh, chastise them. And God has to do that to us sometimes. And no uh, chasing in the Lord is really pleasurous. We don't enjoy it, but it's for our good. So sometimes God has to lay a heavy hand on us, and we have to accept it. And uh, if it causes us to repent of our sins, it's a good thing. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret whereas worldly grief produces death. For, for see what earnestness uh, this godly grief has produced in you, but also the eagerness to clean yourself. Uh, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment. At every point you have proved yourself innocent in this matter, or in the matter. So also I write to you, it was not for the sake of the one who did the wrong, nor for the sake of the one who suffered the wrong, excuse me, but in order that you earnest, earnestness for us might be revealed to you in the sight of God. Therefore, we are comforted. Plain and simple, Paul was comforted. And then when we come to the closing of this chapter, it says this, And besides our comfort, we rejoice still more at, our, at the joy of Titus, uh, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. Uh, for whatever boast I make to him about you, I was not put to shame, but just as everything we said to you was true, so also our boasting before Titus has proven true. You know, the it goes on at the very end here, and it says, and his afflictions for you is even greater, as he remembered the obedience of you all, 
how you received him with fear and trembling. I rejoice because I have complete confidence in you. What a beautiful way to end this chapter, isn't it? Uh, Paul uh, now can put his confidence in the uh, Corinthian believers. They changed. They took off that, that old sinful self, uh, their carnality, and they, they, they are becoming spiritual Christians now, just like God wants us to be. He wants to conform us to the image of his son. Well, I know I'm coming to the end of this chapter, and uh, it really isn't very long chapters, like I said right in the beginning. So next week, uh, we're going to be going into chapter 8, and it really is a complete new uh, subject matter in its encouragement and uh, give generously. In other words, uh, we are to be very open with one another and uh, we're to encourage one another, and we are to be very, um, very giving of ourselves and our resources. But we'll get into that more next time we get together here, and I'm going to end my podcast again. Like I always do, God is out here, and you can find him in your Bible. All you have to do is just pick it up, and he's there. He's waiting for you. He wants to have fellowship with you. Well, with that said, I'm going to end my podcast and uh, just have a great day. Lord bless. Until next time, bye for now.